Elijah Daniels is losing it on Twitter right now and for good reason. So let's talk about it. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel is all about mental health and what I like to do is pull different topics from pop culture or the YouTube community to try to teach you how to improve your mental and emotional well-being. But I also like to increase awareness and de decrease the stigma and all of that. So if you're into that, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. So yeah, uh, Elijah Daniels is losing it on Twitter right now and for a pretty good reason, a pretty good reason. And one of the reasons I wanted to make this video is because Tristan and I actually just finished watching the series Surviving R. Kelly, and I will be doing some follow-up videos on that. But anyways, basically what happened was Elijah Daniels sent out this tweet. You know what? Let's make this a thread reply with a funny, messed up childhood moment. I'll go first. When I was 11, I fist fought my meth head, blackout drunk uncle on Thanksgiving while Kid Rock blared out of his F-150. Then people started replying. People started replying with these messed up childhood stories, trying to make them fun. I get that. Like one of the things when it comes to mental health and just messed up stuff that's happened to you is that we joke about it. Like my mom, my amazing mom, who's been sober about 13 years now, and I've been sober six and a half years, you know, we joke about it. We we laugh, we joke about it, you know, it's messed up, but that's, that's one way to cope. And I will be doing some more videos just about like kind of laughing about it. And for me personally, it helps kind of take the power away from it, right? But when Elijah Daniels tweeted this, he started getting a ton of replies, a ton of replies, and he started to see a pattern. So his next tweet, um, said this, all of these sexual assault stories are pissing me off. Give me names and I will ruin their freaking lives for you. And that's when things got a little bit crazy. All right. So I get it. I get where this anger came from, right? Um, because he just started seeing it over and over and over and over again. And for a lot of people in that moment, you're just like, I need to do something about this. So Elijah Daniels has 577 thousand followers on there and he just keeps reading all of these people all of these young women and i think maybe even some young men talking about sexual assault right just over and over and over again but yeah i can i can definitely relate to this so the problem is is that you know this happens far too often and what eliza daniels is doing which uh, is coming from a good place. Elijah Daniels, I've had mixed feelings about him, but one thing I can say about him that I love is that he's very outspoken about mental health, right? He talks a lot about mental health and his own struggles and tries to help others and all that. So what he's doing is he's getting all these names and screenshots and everything like that, and he's putting them up on Twitter. And I'm not gonna show them so you can go follow Elijah Daniels and check this out for yourself but he's putting like these men's names, he even uh, I think there was one woman in the mix, but he's saying like where they work, what they wanna do, and all of these things. And he's just making this gigantic thread with all of these people. And something that I was just talking about in my last video about R. Kelly and the Gillette commercial that people are freaking out about, like, yeah, like we need to start coming together and doing something, okay? And here's where my experience comes in. So growing up, I've always had a lot of female friends um, and and I've just heard this all too often, all too often. It is, it is actually surprising to me if I have a female friend uh, who hasn't been assaulted at some point in their life. Like that is messed up. So when I was talking in my last video about how we have to teach our young uh, men to be better, you know, like I mentioned that I have a son and all these other things, like this is why. Like this is one of the reasons why, like this is a reality. My audience here on my YouTube channel is like 80% female. And I know so many of you ask me to make videos about these things and talk about, you know, um, mental illness related to this. One of the things that really makes me mad is how much blame goes on drug addicts and alcoholics, right? Like working in addiction treatment, working in large groups of both men and women, um, working in one-on-one -on -one sessions, like both men and women coming into my office having one-on-ones, talking to me about when their drug addiction started, just hearing stories, hearing stories. So many of them, when you listen to an addict or alcoholic story, so many of them, like I'd sit there and be like, no wonder you started using drugs. No wonder you, st you started using alcohol. So like, it breaks my heart when I see, you know, these, these people out there who are like, oh, well you made the choice to use. It's like, 
if your stepfather was doing what I, uh, you know, like to you, what he was doing to these people when they were young, you might turn to drugs or alcohol to cope as well. Like there's so many people who are just messed up because of this. And this is one of the reasons I make these videos, right? Like I know I got some backlash for talking about, you know, a YouTube couple's children, right? And by the way, if you know who I'm talking about, I'm not saying there's any type of assault or anything like that. I'm not saying that at all. But what I'm saying is, is that kids can get messed up at a young age, which carries on throughout life. A lot of you watching this video, if you would like to prove my point, comment down below and let me know something that happened in your childhood that is causing mental illness issues today, all right? Because here's the thing, there are so many examples of mental illness that are caused by something messed up happening in childhood, right? Or any time in life. But a lot of people get messed up in childhood because that's when they're most the most vulnerable, right? So like I said, addiction. Addiction is often a way to cope. So there's only three reasons people drink or use drugs. Just three, all right? To either get a feeling, to get rid of a feeling, or to have an escape. So a lot of people who are being abused, especially kids, right? They're more likely to turn to drugs and alcohol because that's the only way that they can cope with the situation. That's the only way they can escape their reality. And what's happening is they're training their brain that whenever they're feeling some type of way or when they want that escape to turn to drugs and alcohol, right? So this is a major issue because then they become dependent, then they become addicted and all that. There are also a lot of people who are like adults and they're in domestic, um, like uh, domestically violent situations and they're doing the same thing. Like I've had mothers come into my office crying and telling me how awful they felt because they, 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 they stayed with an abusive man because of the children. And the only way they knew how to deal with it by, was by drinking or getting high, right? So a lot of this comes from abuse. A lot of this comes from assault. Now, next, PTSD. PTSD is a very, very difficult illness to deal with, all right? There's a ton of triggers and like it causes a ton of anxiety. A lot of people who have PTSD related to sexual assault, it is very hard for them to have relationships later on in life. And I'm not just talking about intimate relationships. It can be difficult to have relationships with friends or family members, okay? And this can cause a lot of issues later in life. Something that I've talked about, which absolutely breaks my heart when it comes to mental illnesses is like borderline personality disorder. Not everybody with borderline personality disorder is a victim of childhood abuse, but I can tell you from personal experience, working with clients who have borderline personality disorder, there's a huge, huge chunk of them who experience abuse as a child. That's one of the reasons I got so interested with borderline personality disorder because I kept seeing this pattern of people I was meeting in my treatment center who were diagnosed with BPD, then I started talking to them, learning more about their story, and I would say at least in my experience, 90 to 95% of the time, they, they went through some kind of childhood trauma, right? So it, it bums me out that there's such a huge stigma around BPD and not more empathy when so many of them were a victim of some kind of childhood abuse. You know what I mean? And this is why I try to increase empathy across all forms of mental illness. Not just like, oh, feel bad for people with depression or feel bad for people with bipolar or feel bad for people with, you know, this. Like, we need to understand that everybody, like everybody is struggling with something different. Like, you know, I'll be honest, like everybody's struggling with something. It's just to what degree are you struggling with it, right? Like everybody can benefit from therapy, having a support group, whatever it is. Okay, but anyways, getting back to Elijah Daniels, I can definitely understand his frustration and his struggles. For me, it turns into a call to action, like what, what do I do about it? And my call to action, like what, what I do is I do this YouTube channel. And we also have the Facebook group. We also have the Discord uh, server for people to talk and you know have, have others who have been through their experience, get suggestions on how to work, uh, work on things. You know, um, I'm gonna do a video about the amazingly strong women from uh, Surviving R. Kelly and how powerful it is that they're sharing their stories and sharing how they overcame these things. Like I guarantee those women have given other women hope who have been through similar forms of abuse. So just know, if you feel bad about something, it's a call to action. Now, Elijah Daniels on Twitter, blasting these guys all over the place with his 
gigantic following of over half a million followers, and I absolutely respect what he's doing, but all I can say is that I really, really hope that no harm comes to Elijah Daniels for what he's doing right now on Twitter, all right? But anyways, let me know. Let me know down in the comments below, um, like I did a whole series on Illymation, like, what suggestions do you have for somebody who has been through assault or been through abuse? Like, what can they do to get out of it? Let me know down in the comments below, okay? Anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell because I make a ton of videos. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You are all amazing. And if you would like to become a patron and get some exclusive content, be part of the Q&A, and all of that stuff, you can click or tap right there, all right? Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.